Now in this video, we're going to look at the trimmer potentiometer. There's the schematic symbol. It's actually a schematic symbol for a potentiometer, which is really the same thing. So you can see a trim pot there is what these components are typically called, trimmer potentiometer. And this is a potentiometer. You can see it's a larger component. It's made to be adjusted more and handle more power and whatnot. These are actually meant for fine tuning a little bit more, but uh, I think they're actually the more common component because as you can see, they can fit into the board and they're smaller. And so this has its value on it, 10K, that's 10,000 for 10 kilo ohms. And this one says 100K for 100,000. Now this also has a B at the beginning. All of these have B. That means the resistive element in there is consistent across there. So if you go a certain distance you'll have a certain percentage if you go twice as much you'll have twice the percentage of resistance of the total element so the resistive element has a consistent resistance across it there's nonlinear ones where the resistance varies based on what particular part of the element you're at but uh, these are linear they're consistent all I have are linear trim pots so now, as we saw earlier, these two have their values written on them. These also have them written on them, but they're not uh, directly. You have to read the code. And it's like the resistor color code. So we have 5, 0, and then 1. So that's 1 for 1 more 0. They don't indicate the tolerance on here. But uh, that's 500. And then that's 5, 0 with 3 more zeros. So 50,000. And they don't all start with 5. That one starts with the 1. The B is wearing off. And uh, that's a five zero. That one wore off. We would have to take a multimeter and measure across the two terminals right there to get its uh, value. So now the less common use for the uh, trim pot, uh, probably in most circuits, is as a variable resistor. So there'll be power supply to one or the other of the inputs there. And then at the output, we will have a load which goes to the other side of the power supply. So it doesn't matter which input you use, just remember it will be the resistance from that input to the output that will control the resistance to the load. And we will take a quick look at that with the multimeter. So there's about 10 kilo ohms of resistance across this entire component. We will see that right there. And it's actually about 9.25. So they do have a fairly poor tolerance from what I've seen. They don't seem to be close to their exact value, but uh, somewhat close. And uh, not terribly close, but somewhat close. And what we're going to do is take these alligator clips. I'm going to clip one to one of the inputs and the other to the output here. <clears throat> and one thing to realize, this trim pot, it doesn't fit into the board perfectly, and sometimes it loses connection. So we'll see that and it seems to get worse over time and so I generally assign a spot for it and then that's all I use it for and as you can see we're not getting any reading and that is because I'm off a spot there there we go now we are to the input and it was kind of loose in the board so I might have to push this down to uh, keep it but there you can see we're turned somewhat close to it I'm going to turn it closer, the resistance goes down. I turn it farther away from that input there towards the other input and resistance goes up like that. So now you can see the resistance is going up and so we will get up to about the 9.25 in that range that we saw before. Now I'm going to shift this jumper over. You can see it's almost the 10 kilo ohms. It's actually about its full resistance and now we go over to the other one there's almost no resistance there and we turn it up the resistance goes up as you can see there so the value of resistance depends on where the wiper is and which input in relationship to the output there and now we'll add a load so there you can see it there we're gonna add this load which is going to be an LED with protective resistor because this can go down to zero 
ohms of resistance which would fry the LED. We're using a 5 volt power supply, one of these breadboard ones, and we are going to take this jumper here and I usually straddle one of these spots where they don't have a dot for the uh, power supply there. That way we can go up to one terminal or we could add another one or move it down here to connect to that terminal. We're going to take this resistor here. It's a one kilo ohm resistor so we're only dealing with five volts. It's plenty of resistance. That's going to the output of the trim pot and we're going to take the LED to finish the load and we better put it up here. Long lead the anode to that resistor because we're going to the positive power supply in that direction. Short lead the cathode we're going to go down to one row and I need to grab a gray jumper to complete the circuit there. So now I have a gray jumper we're going to put to the cathode of the LED and the negative rail. Now I'm going to turn on the power supply. You can see that the LED is on. It is not terribly bright. It does have a one kilo ohm resistor protecting it, but we can, it also has the trim pot, which is probably about 5,000 ohms of resistance. We lower it, you see it gets brighter. Now it's about one kilo ohm of resistance protecting the LED because we have that extra resistor there. About zero ohms from the trim pot. We'll turn the trim pot all the way up. So as we saw before, it wasn't quite 10,000 ohms, about 9,000. It's closer to 9,000 at least. And so we actually have about 10,000 ohms of resistance, a little bit more now limiting current from the power supply to the LED. So we can make adjustments like that. And as you can see, the, the trim pot kind of disconnected from the board. It cut power uh, completely. But in any case, that uh, is using it as a variable resistor. So that is not terribly flexible. So now, another thing is often you will see the trim pot with one of the terminals going back to the load. And so what that means is that you have that uh, from one of the inputs to where the output is and where the load starts. So what that means is that if the wiper goes bad, if it loses contact, there's still that resistive element there that will provide the full resistance. And then the load will not turn off completely. So if you're making an adjustment, so let's turn it so that it has full resistance. You can see the LED is dim right now. If you're turning this and it is not changing at all, then there's a good chance the wiper went bad. It is not connecting anymore, but we still have the full resistance coming through. And so it will be constantly high resistance, no matter how much you change the, uh, the knob. And so now we're gonna improve the circuit to make it a voltage divider. So this is not the best setup. This is a high value trim pot for what we are doing with this circuit but it will still work. So I'm gonna take this jumper here, put it to the negative rail. And you can see the LED went out completely as soon as I did that. So we got negative rail there, negative rail there. That's because the trim pot is set all the way to the negative rail. Let's quickly turn it all the way up to the positive rail. So right now it's outputting zero volts. It's a five volt power supply. And we turn it up other than when we lose connections because the trim pot doesn't fit in the board perfectly. Now you can see the LED is on as well as it will be. We have five volts at the output. And so it's just like if I yank this resistor and just wire it directly to the power supply. The same voltage there. And so we are adjusting it by changing the voltage that is at the output. So now of course there's resistance within it that throws it off a bit. So we would have to make modifications for a practical circuit. But uh, hopefully this, this makes sense, especially at the 5 volt and the uh, 0 volt spot, which we will use a multimeter to take a look at. So now I have the multimeter hooked up. We will put uh, the meter set to measure voltage. And looks like we're making a pretty good connection there. But uh, the black probe comes through the alligator clip and uh, the probe there to the negative rail because that is our ground and then the red probe there comes to there because this is the voltage in relationship to ground that we are interested. 
in this circuit. And there you can see it's about 5. And as I turn the dial, since there's no load, the load would throw this off. But uh, since there's no load, we can see that about halfway, we have about half of the power supply voltage. If we turn it all the way down to the negative rail, in relationship to the negative rail, we have zero volts right there, pretty much uh, spot on. So we can adjust the voltage. As I said before though, the load kind of throws that off. So you want a load that does not throw off that voltage ideally. And I talk about that in other videos. But the main takeaway is you'll see this voltage divider used in tons of circuits. So this is what it is doing. It is outputting a fraction of the power source voltage based on its position. And so you can adjust it to whatever you want really easily. So it's really nice. So in any case, hopefully that all made sense. That's really about all there is to the trim pot. But as I said before, you'll see it in a lot of circuits. And if you haven't been explained to yet what it is doing, it may be confusing what it is doing. But it's uh, pretty simple. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.